I'm Dr. Deb Butler, and you are listening to Thinner Peace in Menopause and Beyond. This is episode number 423. Well, hello, all my dear friends all over the world. If you can see me or just hear me, hello, hello, hello. I have a really interesting podcast that I want to do for you today. And the reason I think my podcasts are becoming more and more interesting is because I've changed my schedule on when I do my recordings. And now I'm doing them after I do my group. So I'm talking to a bunch of women just like you with problems that I'm helping them solve about losing weight and menopause. And of course, the group is called Thinner Peace and Menopause. And I do them about every three to four months. And we're on maybe the last month. So just get ready if this is something that you're interested in doing. The group will be opening up again in the next month or so. And for the people who are in this group, they are giving me such great ideas on things that I can help my listeners with. And at the same time, as I give them ideas and coach them, I also figure out new tools. So it, it's like a win-win situation when I do these groups. It's good for the women in my group, and it's good for my listeners who are listening, and it's good for my brain because I learn things from the people that I teach that help me create new things to help them with. So here's the scenario today and what I learned and what I want to teach you. So I was doing one of the women in my group today, and the tool that I'm teaching right now is called the comeback tool. And basically, I've talked about this on the podcast, but I do believe it is the most important mind-blowing tool that I can use to help you make this the last time that you ever have to lose weight again. Now, let me say this up front. When I say the last time that you ever have to lose weight again, that doesn't mean that you will never gain weight again. <laughs> because like over the last 10 to 15 years that I've been basically at the same weight, I've gone up and down a little bit and I use the scale to help me understand what's going on so I can bring that number down again. It just helps me. I become curious about it. I look at my behavior. I change what needs to be changed. But I always use the same tools and the same process, which is why I say to make this the last time that you ever have to lose weight again, trying something different. You will never have to use anything different. And it will never be a lot of weight if you do the things that I tell you to do. Now, the most important tool that I teach on how to keep your weight staying close to the same is the comeback tool. And the comeback tool basically means that after you have had a slip up, you're overeating, you're fog eating, you're not joy eating mindfully anymore, maybe for a day, it may be for one meal, it may be for a week, it may be longer, you come back to your body. You bring yourself back to what you know how to do. And it's not instant. And sometimes it takes time. But you come back to connecting to your body, not come back to a different diet or trying something different, but come back to your body by eating when you're hungry at a negative two and stopping when you're full at a plus two eating mostly fuel foods. Fuel foods meaning what you believe to be nutritious foods for your body. And when I talk about fuel foods, there is not any set list of fuel because I think everybody has different fuel foods. And in the media, there are so many different approaches that if you read one, it negates another. So you have to figure out what is fuel for you. For some people, never eating flour is better. For other people, eating certain kinds of flour works. The same thing with sugar. Maybe you can have some sugar, but you're very mindful about it, like a joy, the way I teach it. 
Some people don't want to eat sugar at all. You have to decide what your fuel food is and what your joy eats are. Joy eats are non-nutritious foods for your body. You eat them and you enjoy them and you stop the minute that you're done. But you're not trying to fill up your gas tank or your belly. It's an enjoyment factor. Now, when you're fuel eating, that is to fill up your belly. That is to fill up your gas tank. That is when you're eating between the twos, meaning stopping eating at a negative two and stopping at a plus two. So if you veered from that, which you will, I promise you, you will more than a few times. And you know, what I notice in this group is that when they leave, I teach them how to come back and not get real dramatic about it. We make so much drama about our weight, what we weigh, what we eat. Sometimes it's just the topic of conversations with women. And I am here to say, we got to stop that. There are more interesting things in life than your weight (laughs) and food. And this is part of what we're talking about. So when I talk about the comeback tool, all I'm saying is that if you leave, you're fogging, you're overeating, you're storming, and you're ready to come back, that means the next meal you eat between the twos, mostly fuel food, one meal at a time. That's coming back. The easier and the more frequently you can come back to yourself, the better chance you have of your weight staying the same, even if you have a setback. You can have a setback and your weight can still stay even over time if you don't create a lot of drama. Now, the way that I came up with the comeback tool was based on years of meditating. And for those of you who have listened to my podcast for a while know that I'm a meditator and that I like to do silent retreats where I go someplace in silence and do a lot of meditation and walking meditation. And I'm not promoting meditation on this podcast right now, even though I'm saying that if you do meditate or decide to meditate, it does help you become more mindful of what you're thinking because meditation is all about watching what's going on in your mind, where you are without judgment, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're thinking without judgment, mindfulness. Meditation is a wonderful tool for that. And from that, what I learned from my teachers is one of the tools that they use in meditation, they don't call it a tool. They just talk about that whenever you catch yourself in meditation, thinking, thinking about a story, thinking about a vacation, thinking about an incident, thinking about your future, thinking about your past, and you're lost in it. Once you notice and you become aware that you're thinking, you come back to the present moment. And the present moment can be your breath. It can be a mantra. It could be what you're hearing, but it's coming back to some kind of anchor. And in meditation, that's exactly what they say, coming back, which is where I got the idea as a tool for my thinner peace process of coming back. That if you leave yourself and you're not eating between the twos, or you notice that you're eating a lot of fog food, you're fogging a lot or storming a lot, that once you notice that this is what's going on, you can come back to the next meal and eat between the twos, mostly fuel food, which is my mantra. And it is something that you can learn over time. It is what I teach explicitly in individual coaching and in group coaching. And it is a process. It's not something that you can learn in a day. And for those of you, if you're new to this podcast, I highly suggest that you go back to listening to my first five podcasts where I go over the basic tools, which have not changed very much in the five or six years that I've been doing this podcast. 
So please go back so you understand what I'm talking about here, about eating between the twos, what fog eating is, what storm eating is. I explain all of that. I have a process called the Thinner Peace Process to help you get more connected to your body, especially if you're in menopause. And if you're anything like me, what I found is that I didn't care about being connected to my body most of my life. What I cared about was being thin. (laughs) And as long as my number on the scale was where I wanted it to be, I was very happy. But I also would stop going to Weight Watchers as a lifetime Weight Watcher member once the number went down. And then I would go back to eating regardless if I was hungry or full and using food for all kinds of reasons other than hunger or fullness until I hit menopause. And then menopause, that's when I started making all of these connections to my body and realizing that there has to be a better way to number one, stay at whatever weight I want to be at and feel good about it and be really connected to my body. And hunger and fullness are two of the best ways to be connected to your body. It's the beginning. And in the last podcast or two, I talked about becoming a body whisperer, which means that there are other things in the body that go on too, between how tired you are, how much pain you're in, or if you feel sick, are you connected? Do you take care of yourself? Is part of the body whisperer, especially in menopause. So when I talk about the comeback tool, and that's what we were doing in this group this week, today, one of the women that I was coaching told me that she thought she needed help on coming back. So as I was coaching her, what I realized and what she realized is that maybe three or four weeks ago around Easter, she had kind of foregone the eating between the twos, the joy eating, the planned joy eating. And she was doing a lot of fog eating, a lot of mindless joy eating because it was around the Easter time and her family was around and she kind of left herself. And maybe three or four weeks ago, I started coaching her on coming back. Now today, three or four weeks later, she was saying that she needed help with the comeback tool. But here's what she also told me. She told me she's mostly eating between the twos now, mostly fuel food. And we're in the midst of doing no flour, no sugar, the experiment, which she is doing also. And so I was wondering what she needed to come back from because it sounded like she had come back when I coached her last. And then she said this, and I want you to be able to relate to this. She said, yeah, but I got on the scale and I'm not losing weight. Now, what she was making this mean is that even though she came back and she was doing all the right things, the scale was not reporting weight loss. And therefore, she thought she needed help coming back. But she had already come back to eating between the twos, mostly fuel food. What she still needed help coming back to was managing her mind around the scale and what she expected of the scale. Because a lot of us, when we leave and we come back, we expect the scale to immediately release a lot more weight than it's going to release. Usually (laughs) it never does exactly what we want it to do. And I don't know about you. And this is what I was saying to her. Now, when I was younger, if I was off my diet and then I would get back on it, I could lose 10 pounds in one week. No problem. And I think when we're in menopause, when we're older, we expect that as soon as we come back, and we're doing the right thing, that scale should reflect it. And then we get mad at the scale when it doesn't reflect what we think it should. This is exactly what happened with her. She thought that she needed to come back because the scale wasn't reflecting her behavior. But really all she needed to do was to come back to manage her mind better about her thoughts about the scale. And her thought about the scale, and I bet this happens to you too, there's two thoughts that'll usually come up at a time like this. One, either it's not working 
or two, it's too slow. Those are the two major thoughts when the scale's not doing your thing. And I want you to know that part of the comeback tool really is not only coming back to your body and eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're full, mostly fuel food, but it's also being able to manage your mind around the scale. And usually we need a lot of mind management when it comes to the scale. Many of us expect the scale to do bigger and better things than it's going to do, especially when you get older. It's usually slower. You should expect it to be slow. That is why you don't want to keep doing this is because your body does not release weight like it used to, probably for many good reasons that help us. That's why it needs to be the last time, right? We want to come back. We want our minds to be able to be managed around the scale. And then we want to keep moving and grooving. So even if the scale doesn't go down, you have to be able to know what you're going to think if it doesn't. Now, really what my client said in this group today is she immediately went back to her food journals to see what she could do differently, which is the best thing you can do when the scale isn't doing what you want it to do, is you become more curious and not furious. And you know what she found? Is she found that she was snacking more. Now, I want you to know that I don't care if you snack or not, nor do I care if she snacks or not. I I asked her, what do you mean by snacking? Now, what she said is that she was eating at negative ones, not at negative twos. Negative two is when you eat. Negative one is when you don't eat. Negative one means your body's getting ready, but it's not ready to eat yet. If you eat at negative ones, you're going to find yourself eating often and never really letting yourself get hungry. You could hold on to weight that way. And that's what she found she was doing is that because she was having more urges, she wanted to eat more. And a lot of times when you come back after overeating, you will have more urges. Expect them. If you've been overeating or eating more sugar or eating more flour, when you come back to eating mostly fuel food, you're going to notice that your body is going to raise more urges where you feel like you're going to want to give in to them, which is why it's hard sometimes to come back because the urges are stronger. But if you know this ahead of time, it's a consequence of leaving. Urges get stronger and you could gain weight. But if you're okay with that consequence, then when you come back to yourself, eating between the twos, mostly fuel food, planning your joy eats, if that's what you're doing, you will find that your body will calm down, the urges will calm down, and you will be back and the scale will start reflecting it. Maybe not as fast as you want. I don't know if the scale is ever as fast as anybody wants especially the way it was when we were 20 or 30, for sure, right? But if it's okay that it's slow because it's the last time and you don't make it mean it's a bad thing or a wrong thing, it's a normal thing. But it just feels good to come back. After you've left, if you've been overeating for a while, it's almost like our bodies are crying out to be taken care of please give me some vegetables. It really is. At least I feel like that a lot. And I see it for my clients where it feels good to come back. Our bodies bring us back to just give me something healthy to eat. Even though the urges could get stronger, I think there's also those more healthier thoughts of take better care of me. And that is what a naturally thin, healthy mind, it's how it works is if you overeat or you eat too much sugar, usually your body will say, 
Stop it. Give me some vegetables. Help me feel better. You will notice that the more that you do this, that it feels good. And also expect the urges to be stronger for a while before they calm down. Nothing has gone wrong. It might be slower on the scale. Nothing has gone wrong. It's still working. As long as I manage my mind, it's still working. So I really want you to think about that this week. This really helped me with my group this week. And usually I learn something from them that I can pass on to you. So I really want you to think about that, that if you've left for a while and you're back and you've made the comeback, if the scale's not telling you what you want it to, make sure you know how to talk back to it. It's okay. This happens. I can figure this out. I can look back and see what I can change. Those are all kinds of possible positive thoughts that will help you stay back once you come back. Now, I also want you to know, because you know, I would never end a podcast without saying to you, well, actually, I'm going to say two things to you today. The first is, is that if you've never reviewed my podcast and you're loving it, please go to iTunes and give me a five-star review about this podcast because it helps other people find it. So please go to iTunes and review and I'll take the five stars if you're loving it. And if you're not, forget about it. And also, of course, I would never end this podcast without saying to you, no matter where you go or who you're with or what you're doing, please, please, please be very, very kind to yourself. And I will see you next week.